everyone, Juliet Vickery here in the grounds of the Butos headquarters in Thetford. Of course, I'm pretty much here on my own um, because the offices are still closed, but it seemed like a nice place to be to introduce myself to you all, even if that introduction is just a virtual one. I'd like to just take a few minutes to tell you a bit about myself and to share a few of my thoughts about where the BTO is now and where we might go in the near future. But I want to start by saying how enormously excited I am to be here. I feel hugely honoured and deeply privileged to have been trusted with this position and I'm really excited about working with you all to shape the next phase of BTO's history. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Andy Clements for his hard work and his visionary leadership for the last 13 years. I'm particularly grateful that he's agreed to stay to the end of this year to help a smooth transition in what I think we all recognise as a very challenging time. And I'm looking forward to saying a proper thank you and celebrating his time here before the end of the year. So what about me? Well, I come to the BTO with a deep love of birds and a lifelong commitment to science and conservation. I think you'd probably describe my career as a tale of two halves, the first half in academia and the second half uh, in the environmental NGO sector. And the BTO has already been incredibly important in my career in, in both parts. Starting as a young and very inexperienced PhD student, it was BTO ringers and waterway bird surveyors who helped me catch and study dippers along the streams of Dumfries and Galloway. And then 10 years later, I left academia to join the BTO as head of the terrestrial ecology unit and lead their work on farmland birds. And I still remember the first survey that came across my desk. It was a National Skylark Survey, and I was absolutely amazed, not just at the sheer scale of singing skylarks that were recorded, but the fact that volunteers had been prepared to collect what must have been incredibly tedious data on vegetation height. And that data proved key in understanding why skylarks were struggling to survive in the ever increasing the intent, ever increasingly intensive agricultural landscapes. That time at the BTO really affirmed in me my absolute belief in the value of science to understand and conserve the natural world. And that's a belief that's been cemented in my last 11 years working for the RSPB and leading a team of international conservation scientists. I honestly believe there has never been a greater, more important time for science to inform environmental decisions, hold our leaders to account for the decisions they make, uh, and help find solutions to the problems we all face. So given the importance and the urgency of that task, how can the BTO step up and become even more relevant and even more impactful? Well, I think there are lots of things, but I'd like to focus on four. The first thing is I think it's about carrying on doing what the BTO does best. Only the BTO can provide that national long-term picture of how our birds are faring and of course those birds are great indicators of the wider natural world. And thanks to the hard work of staff, volunteers, trustees, members and supporters, the BTO is in a pretty good shape to do that. Despite everything, for example, uh, the vast majority of breeding bird survey squares have still received at least one visit this year. That's an amazing testament to the dedication and determination of so many of you. So I think sticking at what we do best, and I'm really excited about bringing my own scientific knowledge and experience uh, to build on what's already so great about the BTO and add value to it as we go forwards. The second thing I think we can do is get creative. The world has changed and is changing in ways that few of us could ever have anticipated. And change, of course, brings for many anxiety and it's often uncomfortable. But with change almost always comes opportunity. And I think to grasp those opportunities for the BTO, we need to get creative and do things differently. And we've already seen some fantastic examples of that by staff and volunteers alike. Great online training, and the sharing of experiences and insights and excitement in the field by many of our members using online social media platforms. And once again, I'm really looking forward to bringing my experience from other organisations to think about how to do things differently within the BTO as we go forwards and shape its future together. 
And then I think there are two things we can do, all of us, right now. The first is I would love to see us all speaking up more about the BTO. It's an amazing organisation doing amazing things, but it remains a little bit of a hidden gem, a kind of well-kept secret. I would love to see us be all a bit bolder, a bit more visibly bold about the work of the BTO and our role in it. And the other thing I think that we could do, all of us right now, is connect more people with our work, broaden the reach of the BTO. Covid woke up many people, some for the very first time, to the uh, value and excitement of the natural world and the benefits of connecting to that world for their own mental health and well-being. The BTO is uniquely placed to connect people right across the UK, wherever they are, whatever their background, with the world around them. And I'd love to see us all reach out uh, to more people from more diverse backgrounds to get involved in BTO work. So stick at what we do best, get creative, speak up and connect. And I want to end by assuring you all of my absolute commitment and determination to build on so much that is already so great about the BTO and to grab those opportunities for working differently. And I'd like to invite all of you, whether you're staff, trustees, member, supporter or volunteer, to join me in speaking up and connecting about the BTO's work, so that together we can build a hugely exciting and important future for an organisation that we can all be very proud to be part of.